Welcome to the Zelda Informer Podcast. I'm your host, Alfred Tabax, and joining me today is our usual co-host, Nate. Hey. Say hi. How's it going? I am very nervous for today. <laughs> me too. And then our special guest of the week, Bethany. Hi. Awesome. So, before we, pref- before we start with the news, as some of you know, we are doing, Nate and I are eating a habanero pepper and are setting a monologue tonight. Um... I'm nervous. Like my throat's my throat's like closing up thinking about it. It's like don't don't do it. Um, but yeah, so that's that's gonna be at the very very end. So if you don't care about any of this stuff and just want to see us suffer, it's gonna be the end of the video. And, and the nice thing is that uh, see he's done this before. I haven't. So I, like I'm nervous, but like my throat's not closing up looking at the pepper because I honestly have no idea what I just got myself into. <laughs> he's going first, by the way, too. So uh, it's. So excited. His his monologue is also significantly shorter than mine. But yeah, I kind of wussed out because it's my first time. <clears throat> but we'll get all get to that much later. Right now, we're going to start with some of the news, and we have uh, some pretty cool news. Well, cool depending on who you are and, and <laughs> what what you're thinking about uh, in terms of Breath of the Wild. So, Target listed Breath of the Wild for a June release date uh, after rumors of an eternal delay surfaced. So, you know how sometimes you'll see placeholder dates for December 31st or June 1st in terms of when a game's going to come out for a certain console? Well, they put June 13th on their website for when Breath of the Wild was going to come out for the Wii U and maybe the NX. It just It's a, the pictures for the Wii U. So, that kind of lines up with what we've heard in terms of it not being a launch title um, <clears throat> and you know, a summer, kind of a summer release, and this comes after the information that we talked about, I think it was last week, uh, that Laura Kate Dale and Emily Rogers both corroborated each other on about the uh, delay for the game. Uh, so, this isn't necessarily something new, but it's also, if this rumor is true, then it's confirming that it's not a launch title, um, which is looking more and more like it won't be. Uh, so what do you guys think about that? Disappointed, excited, ambivalent? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, as I told Alfred before we started recording, I, I do talk about this on the Nintendo Prime podcast, which you, which actually goes up before the Zelda Informer one, so I'll, I'll kind of keep my comments a little brief on it. Um, I am, a, a, as a fan, as someone who's played this game already, I am really disappointed that it probably won't be there at launch. Um, I'm not going to say it was the reason I was buying the console, because I like other Nintendo games as well. Like, Mario Switch really looks exciting to me. But it is uh, the primary reason that I was planning on getting the Switch day one. Um, so now, you know, I, I have other obligations and reasons to want to get the Switch day one. But uh, Zelda is what I was really looking forward to. And it was also probably my only legit excuse to request for Nintendo to send me a Nintendo Switch early um, so I could review Breath of the Wild, but that's not obviously probably happening. Uh, so I'm okay at the end. Like, if this comes out in June, I'm okay with that, especially if the Switch already has a strong library at launch. You know, it's got Mario Switch or Splatoon or, uh, you know, and I know Splatoon's a port, so maybe you don't count it. I know there's supposedly a Rabbids and Mario RPG. We'll get to that later. Yeah. Um, so, like, as long as that, that launch is solid and then they have another game come out a couple months later, um, and then, like, the next month after that, bam, Breath of the Wild hits, I'm okay with that. Uh, I worry Breath of the Wild might get pushed back to holiday, uh, and in that case, I would be pretty upset because that would clearly be to try to be the big holiday title rather than the game not being ready, which apparently is the reason that it won't be there at launch anyways. Um, mm. So I'm okay with like waiting until the game is done. Uh, I just hope they don't delay the release even longer than that just so they could have a quote-unquote better launch period. Um, ask Watch Dogs 2 if launching in the holiday season worked out for that. <laughs> or Titanfall 2. <clears throat> like These are two games that are actually reviewing very, very, very well. But the sales aren't there because there's so many big titles that pack into the holiday season. Uh, you're asking gamers to extend their wallets an awful lot. And I think releasing a big game like Zelda in June, when there's usually nothing, is actually a rather smart move. 
um, at, at least in terms of keeping momentum for the Switch going forward. Got anything to add Anthony? to that? Um, for me, um, as a fan, obviously, I'm a little bit disappointed that it won't be a launch title because, like Nate, you know, I was looking to get the Switch day one. And it's probably still going to happen because I'm a Nintendo fan. I like what they do with their technology and how they incorporate it into game systems, but, you know, I was kind of doing it for the Zelda. That said, I would rather have a finished game instead of a rushed one, so it's kind of a toss-up as to how I'm feeling right now. But I'm hoping for good things. <laughs> if they do push it back into holiday, I will be mad. Because this is basically Twilight Princess all over again. Yeah. <laughs> so. But see, that worked out for Twilight Princess. Uh, and, and Twilight Princess's delay was so it could launch with the Wii. This would almost be like the opposite of that. Like, they're missing the launch. Yeah. It's weird, though, because... Does that mean, like, I think you said this at some point, does that mean that the Wii U version will be the definitive edition? Like, people will say that the GameCube version of Twilight Princess is the definitive canon edition for Zelda. Um, well, a lot of that had to do with, this, like, flipped overworlds and yeah, stuff. Yeah. Like, if they don't do that kind of thing, and it's basically the same game with prettier visuals, then I, I don't really see uh, that kind of debate spurning. This. I mean, there's always going to be a which version's better. That, that's just going to yeah. happen because it's the same game on two on two systems. Whether or not it was two Nintendo systems or it was a multi-platform game across, you know, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, that's just what happens. You're going to compare them. Um, but mm -hmm. it, I think, unlike with Twilight Princess and other games they've done this with before, I don't think the differences are going to be as pronounced um, in terms of, like, how good the game is uh, or, or the differences. It's just going to be graphical. Yeah, it's just going to be, like, maybe graphical, maybe better frame rate, which that, that stuff matters. But yeah. it... it it doesn't necessarily say, oh, this is like a definitive version. Like, both versions, I think, are going to be extremely viable and offer you the exact same experience. Mm hmm So. Yeah, I, I agree with all that. Like, I'm as a fan, I'm disappointed, but I understand where they're coming from. Uh, and I, I want a finished game because I'm tired of games coming out full of bugs and glitches. Like, that downside of being a PC gamer is half the time, big-name uh, games come out completely broken. Um, so I'd really rather have a com like complete working Zelda game with maybe like one or two things that need to be patched other than like, oh, well, this game, like I get to the starting screen and then the opening dialogue and then it cuts to black and then it freezes and crashes my, my system. No. Um, <laughs> yeah. So it's a bit of a downer, but who knows? Again, this is also just a rumor. It's, it's a very viable rumor, um, but it's, it's, it's still a rumor. Um, and Nate touched on this too. If the console lineup for the NX, gosh dang it, the Switch is <laughs> good, then that that deficit won't matter. And so here's a rumored leaked uh, lineup for the Switch in 2017. Also, it was uh, rumored that there, w there will be a Breath of the Wild demo and that it's in development and that we might get it at some point. Um, but the lineup is the day one. So day one, it says that we're going to get the 3D Mario, a Mario Rabbids RPG, like like the bunnies, Mario and, and the bunnies from Ubisoft, uh, Splatoon port, which might be a pack in. Uh, so that might be like we talked about either last week or the week before where you get the standard edition and then the other edition with more space on it. And maybe it has Splatoon packed in. Um, some people say Skyrim, some people say not. The source for this specific rumor set says Skyrim will be a launch title for the uh, Switch. Uh, just Dance 2017, that's not even a question. We knew that that was coming. Um, we knew that that was going to be a launch game. In the first six months, we should see a Smash port with Bayonetta and Cloud Amiibo being released on the same day. Um, Breath of the Wild, both Switch and Wii U. Uh, Telltale Guardians of the Galaxy. Heck yeah. And then it's... Yeah, and that's rumored to be very, very close to launch day and release weekly leading to the movie. Um, so that's exciting. 
because that gives us some information on Guardians of the Galaxy Telltale. Uh, there's also a Mario Kart 8 port with the additions that we saw, a Xenoblade X port late in the summer, and then a Mario Kart port. Also, there's an addendum that says the Silver Case, which is a game done by the same people that did Flow, Flower, um, all those other, like, I don't really know how to describe those games. You have to go play them for yourself. Pretty games. But it's, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a visual novel that's been remastered. It's very, it's like 8-bit. It's been put in English. It's coming out, or it's already out for PC and uh, PlayStation 4. Uh, then in, then later in 2017 that we're not 100% sure about, um, we, there's been rumors about the Pokemon Star game, which is uh, Sun and Moon, but like the Emerald version of it. And then Sonic 2017, Pikmin 4, which is being rumored as a Pikmin reboot. I don't really know how you'd reboot that. Um, and then in 2018, we have Beyond Good and Evil, which is not a direct sequel. It's a semi-reboot and a Switch exclusive. So that's a lot of good games. One of the things that I noticed is that there's not a lot of third-party support in there just yet. That being said, this is just a rumor. And most of these are... Uh, maybe this is just a list of first-party releases. So, except for Telltale and Scarlet. <laughs> And just dance and yeah. Whatever. What do you guys think about this? The see, I don't worry about the lack of like major third party games listed in there besides like Sky Skyrim and the Telltale game because to me that just means that the person who reported this, which is Laura Kate Dale, does not mm. just doesn't have sources inside those companies. I mean, it's pretty plain and simple. Um, yeah. You know, she's not going to absolutely know everything there is for launch unless one of her sources happens to know everything. And the chance of any single source outside of an extreme higher up at Nintendo knowing every single game that's going to be on the Switch in year one is pretty pretty rare. Like, if you take that as this is all the games the Switch is getting in 2017, that's that's not good. <laughs> um, that that that's bringing back the gaps that. Mm -hmm. uh, the Wii U and 3DS have, where if you actually look at the Wii U's first year, the sheer number of games that came out is probably comparable to this list. Now, the sheer number of quality games might not be, but you know, just in terms of numbers of games, and it still felt like there was no games to play. Uh, mm -hmm. So, I doubt that this is it. This is just what she knows based on the sources that she has. Um, and all the other sources out there seem to have sources within the same companies, because no one seems to be confirming any other games besides what's on this list. Uh, so I, I'm really excited, uh, especially the fact that the Telltale game is going to be on there. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously all rumors, we don't know for sure, but I, I, I really want that to happen. Uh, and I, again, I saw this on the Nintendo Prime podcast. What's really cool about this happening is that, uh, on that podcast where we talk about, you know, everything to do with Nintendo, I get a chance to talk about Guardians of the Galaxy and a video game podcast if it comes to the Nintendo platform. That is amazing to me. Yeah. <laughs> like, I want to talk about that so bad, but like, it just doesn't fit the demographic. But if the game is there, that gives that gives me kind of an excuse to have a 20-minute segment or so on Guardians of the Galaxy, how awesome it is. Um, but beyond that, it, it's just I, it's a really nice lineup. Uh, you know, Some people mm -hmm. might say there's a lot of reboots um, or a lot of you know porting of Wii U games. I mean, there are. Uh, it's not necessarily a bad thing if they're like definitive edition ports. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it's not bad because uh, we have to face facts. Not not a lot of people like us played the Wii U. It's just the way it yeah. is. So many people missed out on these games. It makes sense for them to come over. Um, it also makes sense for Nintendo not to rely upon those games because if you want to get the Wii U audience over, they're not going to care that these games are on that platform and they already own them. Um, and already bought all the, the DLC. Well, like, like they'll want them to be. We're there. probably still gonna end up buying them. Yeah. though. Like, well, I'm probably still gonna get the Smash. Yeah, and there's that one old rumor eight. still floating out there that no one's confirmed yet about like Nintendo might. If you own like digital copies of this game on Wii U, you can get them for free. Like Ugh. that would be amazing. Uh, you know, where Nintendo's not gonna try to screw over the Wii U base. I, I guess it would be the the temperament there. Uh, but again, don't get your hopes up too much. It, there, there's very few sources that are claiming that that's even going to be a thing. Um, and if it is, that'll be the, like a massive surprise. I would be shocked if Nintendo's like, yeah, we're just going to give you that game if you already own it. Uh, um, because even based on even the history, virtual though. console games, like if you wanted to, once they released them on the Wii U, like if you want, if you had them on your on your Wii U already through the Wii, and you wanted to up them to the Wii U so you could use it on your gamepad, 
you still had to pay like a dollar or two to do that. Um, so it's like really hard for me to believe they're going to be like, yeah, we just re-released this game at 60 bucks. You can just have it. Like, but, but again, I, I don't know. I don't know if we're getting good guy Nintendo here. Um, we haven't seen good guy Nintendo in a while. So, uh, really the 3ds ambassador program was maybe the last time there was a quote unquote good guy Nintendo giving. That was more of like, crap yeah, sorry, it's more I like, we really don't want to piss off the people who bought it early. So here's some free stuff. Um, yeah. so I don't know. I'm, I'm pretty excited. Uh, <clears throat> you didn't mention a particular game yet that I'm thinking of, right? We can talk about that later. Which one? Uh, the third game in a current series that just released. Darks? No. That comes out, that's also on that list, that comes out later next year. I don't want to, I don't want to say it specifically because you might, you might be planning to talk about it later. Am I missing, I might be missing it. What, what game? Pokemon Stars, baby. Yeah, I put that on. I okay, said that. Okay, I want to make sure you said that because that's that's like a yeah, yeah, yeah. that's a huge announcement in that of itself. <clears throat> yeah, because that means and here's here's my hope for that. I was gonna kind of hit on this, is that I would. This is probably asking a lot <laughs> probably. from from them. Um, is something with like better graphics and not that the graphics in Sun and Moon are like terrible, horrible, just horrible. They're they're, they're they're 3ds graphics. You're not gonna get like spectacular. HD 4K graphics yes. on 3DS. I'd I'd love to see like upscale, like everything's fine tuned. Nintendo can finally make a round object. That would be wonderful. Um, you mean Pokemon? Be Pokemon's edges, be round or Pokeballs? I mean every yes. yeah, all the edges on the Pokeballs. There would be no edges. It'd be completely round object. <laughs> things things that I've always wanted from Nintendo. Um, <laughs> just like something that looks really good. It can play exactly the same. Um, I'm already loving Sun. I'd pay for like an HD version that looks like Colosseum or something, but had the exact same like catch all these Pokemon, like all, all this stuff. Um, I'd love to see that as like a an HD Pokemon game on a main console or on a home console. Um, again, that might be asking too much. We might just get a port that's like a little bit better, but not like too much better. But we'll see. What are you guys... Bethany, what are your thoughts on all of this first? Um, I feel like the initial lineup does not look too bad to me. There are things that I would play on there. Um, I know for me it's not as much of a problem because I don't have Smash 4 for Wii U. So I'll be able to pick it up on the Switch if I want. And something I was thinking of... Um, while Nate was giving his opinion was um, even if people had to buy games again um, part of the Switch's advertising is it's portable. We don't know to what extent but I feel like for me at least some wounds would be partially patched up if I were able to go yeah I have to buy Skyrim again but (laughs) I can take it with me. <laughs> so. it, it, it's always um, interesting when I see people excited about that portability because, um, you know, I'm not one of those. I, I don't live in a, an area where I commute a lot. Um, I'm not using. We don't really even have public transportation. I mean, we have taxis, but you pretty much only use those if you're at a bar and you had too much to drink, um, or you're disabled and you just aren't able to drive. Uh, so, you know, I, I've never gotten the appeal of like something like the 3DS on the go kind of thing, except for when I, when I was a kid and I was all on the Game Boy and everything. So like the situations that I play on the go are situations where I could easily just have a laptop and be playing the game anyways. <laughs> um, so Skyrim, I guess on the go, it's like, uh, Skyrim's always been on the go for me. <laughs> I, I've never not been able to play it on the go, uh, but but I understand like the convenience. Like, yeah, it's not just like on the go. Like, think of what, what would I use it for? Oh, I'm dog sitting and I'm letting the dog outside to go to the bathroom. Hey, I could just bring the game with me and just play with it while I wait for him to do his thing. Um, that's something I can't do really right now. I mean, yeah, you can bring your laptop out there, but it's a pretty big hassle because uh, you're gonna have to find an outlet to plug it in if you really want that laptop to run at full power. Um, and the Switch, in theory, should be running at what it's supposed to run at um on battery 
which to me is really exciting um, as someone who has done a lot of portable gaming on a laptop. Um, so yeah, I, I'm kind of excited um, to see where that goes. I'm also excited for my town to maybe install some public transportation so I can <laughs> so I could use it more. Like, uh, like I, I got on an airplane last year to go to E3. That was my first time on an airplane in a long time, and it, the Switch would have been great for that trip, but that's a rarity for me. Um, so I guess we'll see. I'm pretty pumped um, in general for at least what's in this lineup. I think there needs to be more, and I think there will be more, because that was a huge list of third parties. <clears throat> yeah. Like, that's confirmed. That's real. Like, everything we're talking about now is rumors. The list of third-party support is real. So uh, there, there has to be more than what we've already seen. Yeah, and I could see if, if things go, if they do end up, Bethesda does end up giving Skyrim onto the Switch, maybe we'll see, like, Dishonored 2 uh, Definitive Edition put out for it. Um, because there was another report also that said ports from the PS4, Xbox One, and PC would be really, really easy to push over to the Switch because of the Tegra chip. Um, so I don't think we're going to be worrying about third-party or even third-party ports, I hope. Like, that, that sounds like good news to me. Um, but yeah, like you said, this looks like a very good list of, of games. Um, I'd like to see more. Um, as long as these aren't like the only games coming out in 2017, then I'm fine with this list. Um, it's a good start. Because this is, yeah, it's a, it's a great start. Um, and it makes me excited to see Pokemon, or Pokemon, Pikmin 4 on there that, you know, we're not just stuck with the side-scrolling Pikmin games. <laughs> but it's coming to the 3DS. Although I am a little disappointed that there's no, like, Luigi's Mansion HD, but that was a pipe. Uh, and, and, you know, like, I heard you before, uh, speaking of Pikmin, you're like, uh, however you could reboot that. I, I, I think the idea is uh, kind of like what they're doing with Mass Effect. They're not rebooting Mass Effect. It's just a new story in a new part of the world. Um, and, and I think that's what they're maybe trying to get across by not calling this Pikmin 4 and being like, it's kind of sort of a reboot. It's not that they're rebooting with Olimar. It's that they are basically trying to take a new look at the series from a different aspect. Isn't that what they did in 3, though? Uh, kind of. It references Olimar a lot. Um, it references the prior games a lot. Um, it's very much connected well, to 1 and 2. Well, the new Mass Effect, spoiler alert... Is well, yeah, because it, it, it's one universe, too. you know. Like whatever yeah. they do with with the next Pikmin game, it's still going to be within the same Pikmin universe. But I, but I think detaching itself so they can kind of reintroduce it as, as as an IP to people who didn't play the prior ones, I think is a very smart way to approach it. Considering that three didn't really sell that well, yeah, um, it must have sold well enough for another one to be made, but or two more games to be made. But it, it you know, I question whether or not. The general gaming populace really even knows what Pikmin is. Um, and I think mm -hmm. coming into it during its fourth game when there's already a back history is really hard for some people. Um, so kind of disconnecting from that a bit to start off something where you don't need to know a history to understand everything, I, I think is a smart way to go about it. If that's what they're doing, of course. We don't know. Mm -hmm. Still, we'll probably know. Yeah. I mean, she even solicited as Pikmin 4, so it still might just be Pikmin 4. Um, but we'll see. Yeah, sorry, my my video died because I didn't have my Wi-Fi on to record to iCloud. So, well, that's always be a dead space. Yeah, there's gonna be a a dead space right here. A dead space. Speaking of dead uh, space, <laughs> yeah. bring it back without <clears throat> microtransactions. Um. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, so let's move on then. I'm probably not gonna get my video back, am I? Oh well, we'll see. Better get it back so, in time for the peppers. Yeah, I know. At least, at least that. At least so that. we'll even take a pause so you can do. It. <laughs> yeah. Um. So what? There we go. All right. Please excuse there's, there's, our technical difficulties. There's my video. Uh, awesome, it's back. Okay. So this is this isn't really a discussion topic. This is just a little bit of news in case you haven't been reading the site or any site. Um, the Wii U is ending production. So if you really want a Wii U before the Switch comes out, go get one now. Because they're 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 gonna stop making them very soon. Yeah. Um, then on another side note, uh, Aonuma was awarded the Golden Joystick Lifetime Achievement Award for his work on video games, um, which is really cool. And 
you know, it's not really a discussion topic, but it's really interesting. It's great that he got some recognition for his work. Um, there is one topic that I really wanted to hit on, and Nate and I so have somewhat different opinions on this whole genre and how how it's been handled by Nintendo. Um, but a little background: the Game Awards are uh, spon partly sponsored by and hosted. You know, Reggie has a big hand in it, so Nintendo has a big hand in it, um, and so they they funnel money into it. Um, and so they have a say in what goes on in the Game Awards. Well, in the Game Awards uh, for 2016, the there's an award for Best Fan Game. And two games that were in the running have since been removed, and those were Pokemon Uranium and another Metroid 2 remake. Both of which were fantastic games, but they were also games that were hit with Nintendo takedown notices. Um, because they use... Nintendo uh, property, they use Nintendo assets in the games, um, even though for the most part some of them are built from, not from the ground up, but they're made kind of from scratch using, you know, with the Pokemon game, is made from the ground up pretty much using the same type of engine, I guess, um, but it was also made with, you know, they built their own towns, they built characters and battling, um, and then a Metroid 2 remake was built kind of on the Super Metroid engine. Um, and, and in my opinion, I think you know, I, I'm a little mixed on that because at one point I'm like, yeah, those those games deserve to get some recognition, but also I, I don't know if they legally could be awarded for being a fan game since they use official assets. So I, I, I don't know about that one. What do you guys think about that? All right. So for the the Pokemon Uranium and the Pokemon or the AM, AM2R, another mm -hmm. Metroid 2 remake, um, it, it, there's a bit of irony in them being eliminated because one of the other games is a fan Doom game Yeah, that uses Doom assets and remakes basically an old Doom game and makes it better and is actually being promoted by the original company who created Doom. So, like, it's gotten, like, official support to try to win this award. Um so, you know, like, you're like, oh, I don't know if it legally can. Well, it can if Nintendo allows it. Yeah. Uh, the, the the fact these games were originally included and now are taken away is because Nintendo stopped it. There's no other explanation. Nintendo has Reggie fils on the board for the Game Awards, uh, and Nintendo is the one saying, hey, look, you can't give an award to a game that we did a legal strike against to get it taken offline. Like, <laughs> Like you, you just can't do that. It doesn't look good for us. Um, which, in reality, it would have looked better for Nintendo if they would take away those legal strikes, let those games exist. Yeah. Um, and you know, because they're they're the Nintendo's always been kind of backwards thinking on this. And now I understand, um, you know, the side of Nintendo where they need to protect their IP. They need to make it so no one can just do anything they want with their assets. Um, and, and they need to make it so like like I think there was some legal we we talked about this a while back. There's some legal jargon out there where Nintendo almost has to take down these things. Yeah. Um, and the you know the fact that like Doom wouldn't care about it per se uh, because they don't really sell copies of that game anymore. So it well, they're really also aren't they also an American company? Yes, they're yeah. also an American so company. So they, they, there's also American. different laws there. Uh, so. I, you know, part of me understands Nintendo's viewpoint and standpoint on this, and I think even the people who made these games, like another Metroid 2 remake and Pokemon Uranium, they understood what was happening. Like, they had to have known that Nintendo was probably going to take their games down before they mm -hmm. even released them. The only nice thing is the games got completed before they released. Yeah. It, was, it, it wasn't like, here's a demo, and here's another demo, and here's another demo, and here's another demo, and Nintendo shuts you down. They waited until the games were done, threw them out there, and, you know, once it's on the internet, it's always on the internet. Mm -hmm. um, so, like, you can still go find these games. I won't tell you where, but it's very easy to still find these <laughs> games out there. People have download links for them, like, on every download site out there. Uh, so, by the way, don't go to the official sites for them. Mm -hmm. Nintendo is allowing, like, Pokemon Uranium's site to stay up and their forum community, and they're still allowed to update to the game, which is really weird. Like, Nintendo's, like, especially with Pokemon Uranium, like, Look, you just have to take down the download link. Anyone who already has the game, you can continue to support them. It's really weird. Um, <laughs> like, really weird. It's like, yeah, you should have did that, but since it's out there, you can support whoever already has it. 
but just don't let anyone else get it. it it's weird but don't go to that site to get the link because no one there is allowed like they can't even private message you a link like for to download it it's done if you don't have it don't go there but <sighs> pokemon uranium is so good so yeah. good. oh I, I i almost have it beaten it, it's amazing uh so i am really really torn on all of this because part of me is like what was the game awards thinking and nominating two games that got banned anyways um there's no other fan creations out there that could (laughs) have you know made it in you know what about all the various mods that are out there for all the new games um it's really weird that they selected two games that weren't already taken down by a company that the game awards work with um on top of that this whole category confuses me because it, it seems to be favoring fan creations, which are basically modifications or new versions of games that already exist, which, mm-hmm. again, you already said, that's kind of like a legal thing. Like, should you be awarding awards for encouraging people to do that? Um, so it's really weird. It, it's just a really strange place for me. Like, I get Nintendo's point of view, but I also think Nintendo probably should have let it go because I think ultimately it actually helps them get positive marketing to let it go. Uh, just like they, I think they should change their YouTube policies. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, what, what what they do with YouTube, I think, negatively impacts Nintendo. They would they could get a more positive gain if they would uh, open up their their doors more to the YouTube verse and not have to just feel like they need a piece of everyone's pie because they're using game footage. Like okay, <laughs> like you don't have to do that. So many of these big third party companies out there don't do that. You know, Nintendo doesn't have to be like this company that does. But that's the way Nintendo is. They're a Japanese company, um, which I don't want to say that means they don't understand the way the world works, but they don't necessarily understand it as well to the way the world works outside of Japan. Yeah. And that, that kind of sucks. A lot of their moves are very Japanese um, and inconsiderate of the of like the Western world. Uh, their YouTube policies are a prime example of there are some, some laws apparently in Japan like where they have to do something, but they don't have to implement those same policies worldwide. Um and that's what they do. So it's just really tricky. Uh, I'm upset that the games are not included, but I'm also kind of upset that they were included in the first place. <laughs> so it's kind of, I mean, you know, we had this talk before where I was kind of taking Nintendo side on all this. Like, I get it, and I still get it. I, I just, what, what, I'm kind of just questioning what the point of this award is now. Because um, what are fan creations going to be? Because if they're original games, then they're indie games now. They're not fan <laughs> creations. So it's like, true. it's like a fan creation category is going to be people doing something illegal. Um, so, yeah. I, I don't... I don't know. I almost feel like the category should either be eliminated or um, it should be like games that are approved by companies to, to be part of the list. Like if but they went point- to Nintendo and been like, hey, can we include... You know, we can't include Pokemon Uranium or whatever. Maybe we can include, oh, there's this Link's Awakening 3D mod out there. Can we include that? Um, you know, like, <laughs> like, like, like find something that Nintendo hasn't shut down and just be like, yeah. And, you know, maybe that ends up getting that thing shut down anyways. But yeah, I don't know. It, it, just, it just feels like a weird ca- award category to me because it does promote illegal activity. Um, and some companies are cool with that. Like I said, the people behind Doom are totally fine that that thing exists. Uh but that doesn't necessarily make them legal. Just means you're not going to get in trouble because the people who have the rights aren't going to do anything about it. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I'm, that, that's really all I have to say. I'm, I'm really confused. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's a confusing mess. It's that it always is with Nintendo Strikes. Do you have anything Ugh. to add, Bethany? Mm, well, something that came to mind is maybe they could redefine the category not necessarily get rid of it entirely, but maybe get permission from certain companies to kind of hold a contest to make a fan game. And then it's the contestees. You know, you could also change the category instead of it being based around, like, fan game creations. What about, like, fan music creations? You know, reorchestrations of stuff. Like, stuff that's legal, because you are allowed to do that. But is clearly inspired by video games. Yeah, um, we post a ton of them at Zelda Informer, uh, so it's like I know it might be really hard to narrow it down, but that's the whole point of the award. You're trying to find the best ones. Mm-hmm. 
Um, I, I think if they expanded it to that and maybe limited the game stuff, I think that might be a way to keep this award um, and keep it legal, keep it cool. But Best fan film, stuff like that. Yeah. yeah I mean, well, even then you got to be careful. <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe like, um, you know, it, because... I, I don't know. See, like, part of me wants two categories. It's only the problem. It's really only a problem with Nintendo. Well, it's not because um, you could argue that even with fan films, there's parodies that exist and are totally legal, and Nintendo can't do anything about. No, I know, but like with with regular fan films and with you know the the fan games, like you said, the id Software isn't isn't doing anything about the Doom game. It's being like touted by them. But yeah. it's, it's just Nintendo's insistence on, like, their IP. And we don't know <laughs> why they haven't come out and said, this is why we're doing this. And, I mean, they've been vague about it. Like, well, we take we take very good pride or a lot of pride in our <laughs> uh, our games and our IPs. And we want to make sure that they're the best. And yeah, and, and that's what I brought up last time. Like, there's some legalese that might make them have to do it. But, like, Nintendo's not going to come out and say that. Um, they're they're going to try to sugarcoat it. And the sugar coating hasn't worked. Yeah. Like, no one's buying it. You could kind of tell it's a bunch of BS. Um, it's because they're, they're not being 100%. Like, they're not they're not being truthful with it, or they're not being completely open and transparent. Yeah, and, and you could just tell in how, when what they're saying. I don't know. This whole situation's weird. Um, I, I like the award. I, I think it should be expanded to include, like, music um, and all that kind of stuff. Whether or not that would ever get in over a fan game i have no idea but uh i don't know it it feels like a very personal topic to me because a majority of what we cover at zelda informer is fan stuff yeah uh so it's it's hard because there's so much great fan material out there but you just know deep down if it ever gets good enough it's not going to be around anymore yeah. As I just I just mentioned, you know, there's a Link's Awakening 3D modification thing happening. If that ever gets completed and gets good enough, I you, I know Nintendo's going to be like, no, you need to get rid of that. Mm-hmm. Um, now, so so I don't know. It's just very it's a personal thing to me because I've been covering this fan stuff for so long. But uh, I'm trying to understand their viewpoint because I don't think Nintendo actually means any harm. But you, you, it feels weird that Nintendo would try to damage themselves and knock it out of their own way with this kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. When there's already so much evidence that it does not negatively impact other companies. Um, but I don't know. That's it. I got nothing else to say. Sorry, I kind of just jacked it back from Beth. It's, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, my just, just so you guys know, I've been having trouble with my video, and that's why I'm using the crappy OBS, the open broadcast software now. Hey, as long as you get that hot pepper, baby. Yeah. Well, That's all I care about. I, if uh, you're not on a camera for it, I'm going to punch you in the face. I'm, I'm not going to send you my video. That's what it's going to be. <laughs> yeah, Audio no. only. Okay. <laughs> so now I have this this really low frame rate video. Oh, We're back yeah. to the basics. Okay. <laughs> That's all We're kicking news. it old school. Welcome to Zilla for a Podcast, episode <laughs> one. Yep. Uh, <laughs> at least I have a better mic. You know, t- t- pick my battles here. Yeah, right. <sighs> okay, so we're he's getting on. nervous. <laughs> no, we're moving <laughs> on to fan topics. I'm getting nervous because everything's stopping working for me. <laughs> it's like, come on. Okay, so the, some... is the, your tech is responding to your nervousness over the pepper in front of you. It's it's taunting me. Um, <laughs> yeah. So we're gonna hit a few fan topics and then we're gonna have some fun. Not that we're not already having fun, but we're gonna. And, have and Beth's just gonna sit back and laugh <laughs> as we are tortured <laughs> by ourselves. Okay, so first fan topic. All of these come from Facebook. Uh, first one is from Morgan Jod. It says, "How does spinoff games like Hyrule Warriors affect the gameplay and reception of games to follow? Do expectations change with main series titles because of these games?" What do you guys think? I'm gonna toss that one to you guys. Uh, Beth, do you want to go first on this one? I feel like it can in certain aspects. Um. Like, for example, Breath of the Wild, um, it seemed to adapt some of the Hyrule Warriors fighting style. Like, obviously not hordes of enemies from what we could see, but I could definitely see that being a possibility because there's wide open spaces. 
Um, yeah, uh, I don't really know mm-hmm. that Hyrule Warriors has anything to do with wide open spaces in Breath of the Wild. Um, because that's existed in Zelda before. Uh, like the original Zelda was literally the entire game was a wide open space outside of dungeons. Mm-hmm. Um, and there was many, many enemies on the screen in, you know, not hordes of enemies like in <laughs> Hero Warriors. Uh, but I don't think they're, you know, like they've done hordes of enemies in Zelda before, technically. Uh, Skyward Sword, which came out before Hyrule Warriors, did the hordes of enemies towards the end. Spoiler warning. That was there. my favorite part, of, one of my favorite parts of that game. It, it, it was awesome. Like, it, 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 it's still, like, I love Hyrule Warriors, but that moment in Skyward Sword felt better to me than most of the hordes of enemies in, in Hyrule yeah. Warriors. Um, but I, the, there are some things, like, like AJ Nobu said that the production value of the, uh, cutscenes in Hyrule Warriors felt like something uh, that was beyond anything he's personally done. Uh, and, and I think stuff like that is where you could see it impact future Zelda games, where it's like, we can't let the side game outdo something we do. <laughs> um, like, okay, they, this is an HD, like, Hyrule Warriors, HD cutscenes, all this original stuff. Look how good those character models look. Look how good, you know, their movements are. Look, look how fluid everything is. We don't have anything like that. We yeah. can't let this game outdo our next HD Zelda game or our first HD Zelda game. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, it can't happen. Um, so I, I think they kind of take inspiration from that almost as a challenge to be like, look, this game did it fantastically. This shows us that we can do what we do better. Um, so I think in, in that kind of way, it can help uh, push the Zelda team to, to do more than maybe they had been doing in the past. Uh, and I think that's one way to get inspiration. I also think... Uh, if there's anything they might have taken from Hyrule Warriors, like the actual gameplay, because having played the demo, like the gameplay feels nothing like Hyrule Warriors. Yeah. But I bet. Hyrule Warriors has overworld bosses. Breath of the Wild has overworld bosses. And I think that might be an idea that Nintendo got from Hyrule Warriors. <clears throat> um, where you have this big sprawling land, but here's a boss that can just chase you all over the place. That happens in Breath of the Wild. Um from what we can infer, it happens pretty often in Breath of the Wild. So it's one of those things that I think there are aspects of Hyrule Warriors that have affected Breath of the Wild specifically. Um, and there's aspects that had nothing to do with Breath of the Wild. Like, like the fact that it's a big, wide open space, open world. I think that's been happening anyways, because Eiji has been talking about that with Skyward Sword. That's what he wanted Skyward Sword to be, and they just couldn't do it. They didn't have the power uh, to do it the way that they wanted to. And now they feel like they have a powerful enough system with the Wii U and the the switch to do what they want to do which i know a lot of people could say well that's bs that's an excuse i mean it's not like morrowind didn't exist how many eons ago uh but yeah it's i i think the side games can affect future zelda games i i do think it is possible i think that hyrule warriors is the first example where it's actually happened Mm -hmm. um because there's been other side games you know forget the cdi games for a moment because I don't think anybody considers those to have any influence on the series. <laughs> uh, but, you know, you got, like, Link's Crossbow Training. Has that had any influence on anything? The Tango games. Have those had any influence on the mainline games? I think you'd be hard-pressed to say yeah. So, Hyrule Warriors, I think, has impacted Breath of the Wild, but impacted it in ways that are actually ways that the series should have already been doing in the first place. Mm-hmm. Um Especially so, like you talked about the cutscenes, like yeah, not that the story was great for Hyrule Warriors, but it was it was better than what we've gotten. Yeah, it's not even the story; it's the quality mm-hmm. of those cutscenes is amazing. It was like CGI, but not CGI. Yeah, and you it, didn't feel like you were taken out of the game. Well, it, it flowed with the game, and yeah, and what we got in terms a, a lot of, of cutscenes on Zelda are abrupt. Like with uh, Skyward Sword, like they'd fade to black or something, fade to white, and then you'd see a cutscene, and then it would fade, and then it would put you back into the action. Um, those those were more kind of like, you know, you get to this point, and then here's here's the cutscene. It, it just it felt more like there was a, a cohesive like movie playing along with the game. Um, yeah. In terms of cutscenes, which is I think Hyrule Warriors cutscenes push the story forward better than most other cutscenes do. Yeah. Not to say that, you know, the story for Hyrule Warriors game was fantastic. It was good, but, you know, plot twists like, oh, who's Sheik? Well, I don't know. Maybe it's Zelda. 
Yeah, yeah like it's like everybody's yeah, acting it, like it, they it wasn't what fleshed out in that way. Like I don't think Hyrule's story is necessarily like the best Zelda tale ever told. <laughs> it's not, but like the the approach to the progression of the story through the cutscenes, I think, was overall better than what we had seen in the past. And that's saying something because Zelda's done some some fantastic. You know, some of our favorite moments from Zelda are some of the cutscenes. You know, mm-hmm. Link, you know, has that moment in Skyward Sword where you really feel for him and you can almost cry as a player. Um, you know, when he finds out certain things about Zelda. And, you know, there are these emotional moments, but those are the few and far between. In Hyrule Warriors, it just felt like everything flowed nicely with the gameplay and the cutscenes and the story um, in a way that Zelda games traditionally don't do very well. Um, So at least that's one thing that Adrian almost said himself he's taken inspiration from. So we know for sure at least cutscenes are something that he looked to improve on in Breath of the Wild because of Hyrule Warriors. So we, we do have some statement from the man behind Zelda on, uh, on some impact from Hyrule Warriors. But we'll see. We, we've only seen, what, one cutscene? Kind of, yeah. I mean, you could argue multiple if you count the little conversations you have at the end of every shrine, but I don't, I don't really count those no. cutscenes. Those are just conversation trees. So, pretty, I, I agree with what you said, like, that those are... You know, he's come out and said, or uh, Onomo said that that's where they want to improve. And that they can take things from, like, Hyrule Warriors and think, well, this was a great asset to that game. Let's let's add it here in a, in a little bit of a different way. <laughs> um, but, moving on then, uh, Josh Gardner asks, well, poses the idea of Smash Bros. being taken on by a director other than Sakurai. Um, and this is something that, you know, I, I've talked about before with... Um, I don't think it was on this podcast. Might have just been with some friends, um, but it'd be interesting to see because Smash Brothers is like Sakurai's like baby, and he <laughs> goes through painstaking detail to make sure that that game is fantastic. Like he lots like of heard, balance, yeah, lots of balancing, lots of care into the characters. I mean, the the amount of effort that Sakurai puts into a game puts a lot of people to shame even Especially with not... the condition he has yeah well because it, even with like taking into account kid icarus uprising okay oh god that that game took a lot out of him and doesn't he have like a oh arthritis now because of that game or something it's it's some uh condition it it sounds like arthritis but apparently it's even more serious than that where uh when it flares up he can't use his hand at all Mm-hmm. for like long periods of time and he tries to like play test the games with one hand or he tries to claw it um and it's extremely extremely painful and uh there was a report you know after smash bros came out that you know he was basically taking a really prolonged break because of how much the game affected his health but it also said that he knew what his next game was going to be yeah he did um and you know at this point Sakurai can pretty much do anything he wants I'm sure he's made plenty of money in his career Uh, at least I imagine he has I don't really know because I guess uh, not even the CEO of Nintendo really makes you know big big bucks Um, and here's the thing then do we think that a Smash Brothers game could be done without Sakurai like do you think without his heart and effort being put into the game do you think it would be good um I mean, other fighting games exist, so yeah. That's true, but none really like Smash Brothers. Well, I mean, unless you want to say PlayStation, PlayStation also. Yeah. Yeah. Which... Um, I mean, there's fighting games that are that are pretty balanced. I I think. I mean, even Smash Bros. isn't that bad. I mean, no. look at the professional Smash team. Like, there's tiers for the characters. Like, <laughs> it's not perfectly balanced. Uh, but I think uh, I think it can. I'm sorry, excuse me. And I think part of me feels like it needs to. Uh, I don't know if we're going to get that this next generation. Because if we were, why are they supposedly porting this game over? Well, like you Um, said earlier, they they missed out. A lot of people missed out on a lot of Wii U games. So I can see them porting it and making another one. But I I don't see them making another. I I think if they're porting it over, there isn't going to be another. Because they only do one per generation. Um, Yeah, but this might be different. And, and I'm, I'm just holding on to the that I, idea. Yeah, see, I, I think this might be different in that Sakurai said he's done with Smash and Nintendo doesn't know what to do. Yeah. So they're just going to port, port what they already have. 
<laughs> melee for uh, and, and maybe Switch. they begged like beg Sakurai to be like look can you just do like one or two more characters that we can add to the Switch version please because you know the rule all the rumors say there'll be new content so it have to be new characters mm-hmm. um, so you know maybe they're like look we'll, we'll give you you know some extra money just please do two more characters and he's like <laughs> fine but I get to choose who they are please be ice climbers <laughs> more please. fire emblem characters please be ice climbers need to come back um but yeah, so it, it, <laughs> more fire! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> but, uh, yeah, but yeah, I I think a good Smash game can exist without Sakurai. I think it's going to be very very hard to trust the game until we play it because he is so heavily involved, mm. especially with the balancing of the game um, and how each character feels. That I, it, it's going to be hard to feel to be like feel like anyone else can do that. But I have to believe somebody can. It, it just hasn't been attempted yet. Um, so I, I'm kind of willing to give a, a, a chance. I, I think a lot of it's going to depend on if Sakurai doesn't do it, does that mean Sakurai's team isn't involved? Because um, it's very possible Sakurai's team could be involved, just Sakurai isn't there anymore running mm-hmm. that. He's working on his own projects. Um, I don't know. Because I don't know how much of Smash Bros. is Sakurai's team and how much of it is people at Nintendo. I, I don't really know. So uh, it, it's going to be hard to believe it until we see it. I personally just don't think we're going to have to worry about it for like another eight years. Mm-hmm. And then that's when they'll finally do a brand new Smash. Uh, especially, you know, now that... As an example, if they're doing new characters, you figure there's got to be a squid from Splatoon. I mean, especially if Splatoon's a pack-in launch game. <laughs> like, let's just be real. There obviously has to be a Splatoon DLC add to the game. But, it, I don't know. You get Kelly and Marie instead of the Ice Climbers. Yeah. Like, I have to believe that Sakurai is probably done with Smash. Because he's wanted to be done for a while. Uh, for people who don't know, the only reason Sakurai was still doing Smash to this day was because of his relationship with Iwata. Mm-hmm. Um, him and Iwata, if you go through the history of Iwata's career, which is easy to find out with all the tributes that have been done for him, him and Sakurai were very close. And Iwata actually helped save Sakurai's career at several points. Uh, so, like, there was a lot of friendship and deep admiration and dedication there. Without Iwata around, Sakurai doesn't necessarily, maybe he doesn't feel like he owes Nintendo uh, to keep doing Smash. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. I, I think things are going to be in murky waters uh, for Smash Bros., whatever happens next after this port. But I, I think as fans, we have to be willing to give it a chance because how many people, still to this day, even with how fantastic the Wii U Smash Bros. is, just keep saying Melee is the best <laughs> and nothing can beat it. Well, if nothing can beat it, then clearly we need somebody else running Smash Bros. that can do a new direction. Um, that could provide something that maybe Melee didn't or for some reason because, you know, Melee is the Smash game that doesn't die and, and as much as I, I appreciate that Melee Smash community and the and all, all the things that are behind it, you know, you got Project M out there, which, by the way, another fan project that Nintendo didn't do anything about. Um, <laughs> a very popular one at that. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I'm just... I'm torn. And I think I'm going to be torn until a new Smash game comes out and I can see for myself. Yeah. By the way, I really hope Sakurai gets to make whatever game he wants to make because he deserves it. More fun Even if more. it's not for Nintendo. By the way, Sakurai's company is as a full third-party company. They aren't actually part of Nintendo. Hell Labs. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so he could do anything he wants. So if he wants to go off and... You know, make a game for PlayStation 4. Be, be my guest, man. Do whatever you want to do. It's about time um, that... And, and I kind of feel this way even about some of Nintendo's big directors. Like, even EJ and Nomu. Like, I, I feel like if they have a passion to want to do something else, let them. You know, I know Nintendo's not going to be like, oh, you want to go make an Xbox game? Go do that. But they can be like, look, <laughs> if you want to make a different, a new IP, like, go do that. We have plenty of people here that want to run Zelda. Yeah. You know? Um, because Miyamoto did that, you know, Miyamoto stopped, you know, running Mario. He stopped running Zelda, started working on different things, you know, That's how came we up with Wii Sports, also came up with Wii Music. <laughs> um, 
But yeah, so I don't know. That that's kind of my my take on all that. I, I think Smash is going to end up being okay because we're not going to have to worry about it for a long time. Mm-hmm. You have anything to add, Bethany? Um, as a Smash fan, not really because Smash was one of the very few games I just didn't really get into. Oh, but <laughs> that's okay. As a writer, I can definitely say that. When your heart goes into something, it's kind of in there, and if somebody else tries to, like, for example, create a sequel to a story that they really love, will it be good? Of course. Will it be the same? No, not really. (laughs) And so I can understand if, you know, Sakurai did say, I'm done with Smash. It might take a while to find, like Nate said, that person who's going to be able to add in elements to make it feel like Smash and not tick a bunch of fans off. (laughs) Yeah, kind of view it like a Star Wars. Like, you have the Star Wars A New Hope, Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi, the, 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 the trilogy. Um... And George Lucas did a great job on those. And we were like, well, who can replace him to make, make a Star Wars film? And then we get J.J. Abrams with uh, Star Wars uh, 4, which is A Force Awakens, because the other ones don't count. Um, <laughs> we have A Force Awakens, and it wasn't... Okay, it was kind of the same movie. Um, but it wasn't, like, the same in terms of the same magic. It was It was different. It had its differences in terms of how it was made, what was done. Yep. Um, so kind of view it like that. Like, you know, these are great games, and but it can be done by someone else just maybe not the exact same way. And we shouldn't expect that. Like, we don't want, you know, I mean, you, some people... You don't like, want someone to come and try to be Sakurai. Yeah. That's not like, going to happen. The, that's that's not, you, it's just like you don't really want someone to come and be Miyamoto. It's, it's not going to happen. Uh, just like, you know, just look even at the Zelda series. It has fundamentally changed when it went from Miyamoto's hands to E.G. Anima's hands. Mm-hmm. And that's fine. It should. You can't expect who's ever taking over to do what the last person did in the same way or at the same quality. Um, you need to let creative freedom exist for games to be as good as they can be. All right. Well, within reason, of course. Those are our, our fan topics because we're hitting, we're hitting that hour mark. <laughs> and Nate, so, oh. you know, we're heading into the holidays, we're heading into Thanksgiving, and um, it's a time of giving thanks Am for I going to be have. able to taste Thanksgiving in a few days? <laughs> <laughs> well, just think, like, I want you to think back to the first Thanksgiving feast where they had turkey and and and, and whatever else they had. Corn. But they also, the corn they had. They also probably, maybe, um, more than not, not likely, had habanero peppers. So <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure. <laughs> So they spiced all of their food with it. In the spirit of the Thanksgiving holiday, we're going to do monologues. Both of ours are from The Wind Waker. After having eaten a habanero pepper, and you might be thinking, wow, this sounds kind of like hot pepper gaming. It's like, you're probably right, because that's where I got the idea from. But Exactly. They, game, they do reviews of, yeah. of games, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll put a link to one of their videos where my hand Yeah, they, they do right some here. cool stuff. Uh, we almost got invited to actually do a review, but we just couldn't make the trip. Right they're, all, they're all California located. Oh, well. Yeah. I go. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Well, yeah, you weren't part of the site back then. It, no, was, no. it was for a review of Skyward Sword. Um, so, back in the day. that being said, Nate, my main man, you are up first, my friend. So, like, I'm rotating this pepper in the camera right now. <laughs> take take I, it, eat. I, I, I'm looking at it, and I'm like, why did I buy such a big one? Because <laughs> when, when I was at the store, I was holding, like, this little dinky one, and I was like, yeah, that's the one, baby. And, of course, knowing my luck, the little dinky one will end up being the, at the hotter end of the scale. Um, but I, I'm just like, no, I can't be a, a you know, a, I, I can't wuss out. I need to go with the, with the big bad one. Um, so of course I picked the biggest one they had at the store, which by the way, isn't actually that big. I didn't realize how small habanero peppers were until I went shopping for them. Yeah. Um, so like, like you look at bell peppers. So like I look at them and I'm like, well, yeah, of course they're not. Cause if they were like giant bell peppers, they're probably not that hot. Yeah. Um, but, but I'm, I'm looking at it I'm like, Oh, how can this little thing take me out? <laughs> like, I'm just going to put it in my mouth, swallow it whole, no big whoop, no spice. 
that's that's not what's gonna happen. You have to chew it, Nate. I know, because I, I, I look at it and I'm like, I don't think I think if I try to swallow, like take one bite and try to swallow the whole thing whole, I'm gonna choke it. <laughs> I got a big one. I could have pulled it off with a little one. Oh God! All right, I'm just here's, delaying this as much as as much as I can. Moment. Okay, at least you um, have a short monologue. Okay. Yeah. So 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 people know uh, the monologue I chose. Uh, is the speech that Ganondorf gives at the end of The Wind Waker. So if you haven't beat The Wind Waker, I do apologize for spoilers. Um, although I, it's going to probably be so incoherent. <laughs> I, don't what I, I don't know what I'm going to spoil. If, if I could just get the word ocean out, that might be good. <laughs> oh, God. All right, you ready? Uh, so you've done this before. Yeah, oh, it doesn't make it any better. I know how much it's going to hurt. That's what I'm saying. You know. I don't. I'm already crying. <laughs> Hold on. Here we go. See, and I was the one that was going to go do the hot pepper gaming one way back yeah. when. Of course, they take it a little easier, and then it goes straight to habanero. Uh, it was your first time, but uh, all right. Ugh. They will now. <laughs> yeah, they will. Yeah, maybe they do. I don't know. I haven't, I haven't kept up with them. No, because we've done it here. Because we've done it, right? We. Oh, God. I'm sweating. <laughs> I haven't even put it. Okay. You know what? The more I delay it, the worse it's going to be. So, yep. <clears throat> oh, my God. I apologize, Yulia, for the gas I'm passing tonight. <laughs> Hope it's just gas. All right. <laughs> Damn it. I'm so nervous right now. Go, I've been, go for it. I've been hoping for so long. Oh, my internet's out. Sorry. <laughs> oh, on the bright side, the Milwaukee Bucks are probably going to win. Just think of the bright side, Nate. Here we go. <clears throat> Oh. Oh. Do you sleep still? Wait. Do not be so hasty, boy. I can see this girl's dreams. Oceans. 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 Oceans as far as I can see. They are vast seas. None can swim across them. They yield no fish to catch. What did the king of Hyrule say? That the gods steal Hyrule away. And they left behind people who would one day awaken Hyrule. How ridiculous. Oh my god. So many pathetic creatures scattered across a handful of islands. Drifting on the sea like fallen leaves on a forgotten pool. What could they possibly hope to achieve? Do you see? All of you. Your gods destroyed you. Thank God's your turn. <laughs> wow. Such an eloquent speech. I'm getting all my chocolate ready so that I can... <laughs> not totally. Oh my not. god! <laughs> oh my god! Chocolate not helping. <laughs> oh my god! I can't make it stop. It's getting worse. You can't. I'm gonna choke if you keep making me laugh. No, I'm gonna mute my mic then. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> okay, I'm already crying, but it's not because of the peppers. Because that was freaking hysterical. Um. <laughs> now I am nervous. Okay. <clears throat> so my monologue. Uh, more like uh, essay has the entire introduction to the Wind Waker. Um, there's there's really no spoilers needed. Oh gosh, I I picked a relatively big one. It's it's about that big. It's like my ear size. Oh. <clears throat> yeah, you can unmute now, so you can laugh at my pain. Oh. No, how long does this last? Ten hours? <laughs> okay. Ready? I'm I'm ready. Yeah, I don't need to ask myself. Whew. This is but <clears throat> one of the legends which uh, which the people speak long ago. Oh, there, there existed a kingdom where a golden power, a golden power lay hidden. This is Triforce. Oh my gosh! Oh, breathing makes it worse. <coughs> it's a prosperous land, <coughs> plus a green forest, top mountains of peace. Oh my gosh! But one day, a man with great evil found the gold power to make it for himself. Oh. 
Woo! I'm gonna strike this command, he spread the darkness. Chris the kingdom! With all hope, it died in the hour. A doom scene at hand. Oh, a young boy clothing. And great appeared from nowhere. Oh, we're only in the sword of. It was Bane. <clears throat> okay. We're only in the blade of evil's Bane. And he seemed to win the dark one. He gave the land light. Uh, this boy who traveled through time to save the land was known as the hero of time. And the boy's tale was passed through the generations and became legend. Oh, it didn't help at all. But then a day came when a fell wind began to blow across the kingdom. The great wind, the great evil. Sorry. That all thought had been sealed away forever, but the heroes once crept forth of the. Let's take it. Through the depths of earth, eager to resume his dark designs. <coughs> Ooh. Choking. The people believed that the heroes of time would once again come to save him. Oh. Need more. <laughs> Need more. Uh. Mm. Oh. God, breathing sucks right now. <laughs> I think I'm finally getting I'm out of calmed down thing. a little. <clears throat> I think that's as far as I can go. <clears throat> oh my god, you can't even finish? <clears throat> no. Oh, that's what she said. It's killing me. Oh my gosh. It's definitely hitting you harder, ma'am. Yeah. <clears throat> oh. Huh. Oh. That's... Just think, I thought you were going to be pro at it. Yeah, Time number three. <laughs> oh. No. Oh. I hate every second of that. Oh my gosh, it doesn't go away. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It gets worse. <laughs> Might start to finally get a little better. I think it's almost getting out of the roof of my mouth. Still on the bottom, but... I got it on my lips, so it hurts even worse. Oh, I was lucky. I got it off my lips. <clears throat> I got the whole thing in without touching my lips. Oh. Mine, like, burst apart. <sighs> <laughs> oh man, welcome to the Zelda Informer Podcast, aka the oh. Hot Pepper Gaming 2.0. <laughs> we hey. survived. Only one monologue finished, but I give Alpha credit for trying to go for the long haul. Oh boy. I can, I can finish. You can no, finish? So. Yeah. Okay, come on. Do it. The great evil that all thought had been forever shielded away by the hero once again crept forth from the depths of the earth. Now it's just, it's coming back. Eager to resume its dark designs, the people believe, oh my gosh, the more I talk, the hotter my mouth gets, that the hero time would come, again come to save him, but the hero did not appear. No, he didn't. Faced by an onslaught of evil, the people, I'm still crying. The people could do nothing but appeal to the gods in the last hour. Oh, it's getting, it's coming back. <laughs> <coughs> As Doom drew nigh, they left the future in the hands of fate. I became the kingdom none. I mean, who know? <clears throat> the memory of the kingdom vanished. This legend survived on the wind's breath. On a certain island, they became became customary to guard boys green. And when they came of age, clothed in the green it feels, they aspired to find heroic blades cast out evil. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> I'm almost done. My sin is... Oh. The elders wished only for the youth to know courage. Like the hero of legend. Oh my gosh, I'm done. <laughs> oh. I have a question for you, Alfred. What? Do you like spicy food? Well, yes. Not that spicy, though. See, I think that's why I'm having an easier time with it. Like, I've had habanero. Like, not like a straight pepper. But, like, habanero chili is, like, my favorite, man. No. 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 <laughs> so, like, I, I like I like <laughs> spicy. So, it hit me really hard. There was a moment there I thought I was going to throw up. Yeah. No, I hit that twice. Um, but I, I push through. I'm like, if I could just push through, I have a short one. I push through, I can get to my food. You should see how quickly I get to my food when I'm done. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, but let me tell you guys, do the pepper when you have a cold sucks. My nose was fine. Now it's just like running and I have no <laughs> yeah. Kleenex. So like, I'm trying not to let it show on camera, but it's so hard. I can only sniff it up so much. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Beth, were you, were you not entertained? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> Just wait till you see the camera. Seriously, it's getting worse. <laughs> oh my god. The more you talk, it like pushes air to the roof of your mouth. <laughs> and it just hurts more. I'm almost out of bread. <laughs> oh man, my Hawaiian rolls. No. Like, the chocolate wasn't helping, and then I shoved like four in it once. Then it kind of helped. <laughs> the milk, I realized I, I, I meant to give myself whole milk. I did 1%, so it's like water. <laughs> so it didn't help. I would the bread's helping a lot though. Mm -hmm. oh. Awesome. Well that is one heck of a 
Happy Thanksgiving podcast. We're never doing that again. <clears throat> never? I mean, everybody, I mean, you guys, you can. I'll let you do it again. Of course. Not me. Of course. So third time's the end for you, huh? Uh, yeah, probably. <clears throat> Remember, fun, everyone, fun this was Al- his idea. Fun Alfred story. Oh, when, I, oh, okay. when I first got to college, for my freshman year, it was like my th- second, third week of college. <clears throat> I had never been to Buffalo Wild Weeks before. And so... Okay. We went to Buffalo. Did you get the, the hottest one? You just wait. So, <clears throat> I was like, I've never been here before. And so I was like, oh, I'll try the medium. So I got the medium, and I was like, I'm not that bad. So I, I got five of those. And then I went up to uh, five hot. <clears throat> and yeah. the hot's really not like like that. It's not that hot. No, um, it's really not. <clears throat> so I was like, that's not that bad. Like, that's that's pretty easy. Like, it's it, it burns a little, but it's not that bad. And so I was like, you know what? Give me five of the blazing. And everybody <laughs> looked at me like I was just insane. And I was like, the hot wasn't that bad. So how, how bad can this be? <laughs> it, it, were, were, did you get them dry or wet? It was the wet rub. Oh, that's really the worse. worst. And so I I uh, <clears throat> took a bite of one. And then like I sat there for a second. <laughs> and... <laughs> Tears started falling from my eyes, oh. and like everything started to hurt. But I had to finish them because I ate, because I bought them. <clears throat> I'm not gonna let food I bought go to waste. So I ate five sure. of them. Sure, and five I, of them. Yeah. I. This is uh, this part is 100 percent sure. I'm not lying. I my mouth had gotten so hot, and I was in so much pain that I tried taking like a tablet of Advil, and it melted in my mouth. Okay. It, nothing helped. I drank like five people's cokes, and it just got worse. No, oh, yeah, you can't drink soda. <clears throat> so I purposely like I have a thing. I have like a cup from Arby's here because that was my <clears throat> my, my dinner. And I'm like, I you know how many times I wanted to grab it? I'm like, nope. I drink soda. This is oh, I'm, I'm done. I'm gonna puke. I had it on my hand, and I rubbed my eye. So now my eyes burning. <laughs> But yeah, I had root beer, and I was like saving it up for like the aftermath, like what what I'm going through right now. <clears throat> but I drank all of it right before the show, and I was like, "Dang it!" Yeah, so that's oh my gosh, now my eyes on fire. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, this is the best podcast episode I've ever been on. Okay, so that was that was the. Song. I'm just glad that it wasn't me. Like I don't, I feel bad though. I feel like I should have did the longer speech because I'm handling this a lot better. <clears throat> yeah, no. I mean, you... I'm not saying this is something I want to do regularly, but <laughs> I, I know I can survive it. Um, my, and... my... oh boy, yeah, I'm gonna try to match up the 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 theme music with what I'm saying, and so oh, you're God. gonna hear it like it's gonna be bad. Editing this is gonna be a pain, uh, just huh. in general because of my video. <laughs> but yeah, so that was the Zelda Informer podcast. Everything episode hurts. I don't even what episode is this? Twenty six. Was 26. it last week? Twenty six. I. <laughs> this is episode somewhere between twenty and 30. the last episode I think was twenty five point two. The uh, okay. oh our, our oh, wait, wonderful... wait 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 if if you didn't catch uh twenty five point two everyone. Uh, go check it out. We have it up on YouTube. Uh, if you listen to our audio version, you already have it. We have the whole thing together. A lot of people didn't like our choices for who to play uh, Link and other That's characters. That's no surprise. Yeah. We people picked. have different tastes, and people think certain actors really, really, really suck. Um, and that's okay. Yeah. Welcome least, to having an opinion on the internet. At least your mouth and your face isn't burning. So it just always... I know. I'm, I'm, I'm actually doing okay. Yeah, my eyes. I think I think I'll be okay. It's gonna take me probably an hour to get it all settled down, but oh, yeah, yeah, I got a little I got a little pain in my chest right now. I don't know if that's any good. Oh man, I hope something go in my lung. God, that would suck. <laughs> okay, so thank you guys for joining us on this wonderful, wonderful podcast. <laughs> this wonderful, wonderful podcast. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving oh, to happy Thanksgiving. everyone who celebrates Thanksgiving. Eat a okay. habanero American pepper on. on us. And enjoy it. Uh, exactly. <laughs> and if anyone wants to up the game and like go to a ghost pepper, psh, you better we'll, you better record that on video and send it to us. We will feature it on our site if you I read... would guarantee you. You down a ghost pepper and talk about something from Zelda for like two minutes, I will guarantee we post that on Zelda Former. We, it'll be front page for like a month. That, that's, that's... <laughs> well, I don't know about a month. 
Okay, for like I'll, a week. I'll give you a, I'll give you a week. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you get for That's what you get. That's all you're worth. You're really worth a week if you if you're that brave. For your pain. Oh god. I it's coming back up. For, <laughs> I lost the little clip for my bread, so Yeah. Come Life's, on, Life's swell, guys. Alright, thank you for joining us and our pain. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Don't all you right. want to join in on the fun <laughs> next time, Beth? Um I think I'll pass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm not, I might even let you do a jalapeno. That's not that bad. That's not even hot. Jalapenos aren't as uh, bad as what we just did. What? Jalapenos, jalapenos not too hot. Aren't as bad Cayenne as what we just did. pepper on the other Jalapenos hand. are not as bad as what we just did. No, they're not. Habaneros are like 140 times hotter than a jalapeno. Yep. <laughs> so, <sighs> that'll that'll about do it for us tonight. We're not going to edit any of this till tomorrow. <laughs> Have a good one, everyone. <laughs> yeah. Thanks.